Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Vail, Colorado for the Vail Scientific Summit. This is the third year of the summit. I'm Greg Lewis, and uh, we're on day two, and I'm joined by the man who is the vice president in charge of sports medicine for the USOC, that's the U.S. Olympic Committee, Dr. Bill Moreau, and uh, it's good to see you here. What, what are you uh, trying to accomplish here? This is all about heavy-duty science, and, you know, is that, are you into that? Well, Greg, I've learned that I'm not into it to the level the presenters are. <laughs> None of us are. This, this is high-level stuff. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the 65 presenters that are here are literally the world's best of the best when it comes to the topics related around cellular science and the protection and prevention of health as well as the restoration of health. Obviously, uh, I have a tremendous responsibility as leading sports medicine for the United States Olympic Committee to be able to look out for the individual's health of the athletes, whether they're Olympic or Paralympic uh, athletes. We need to be able to protect and preserve their health. And in fact, we really believe that if we can field a healthy team, that Team USA will win the day on the field of play. You know, fielding a healthy team is uh, obviously the objective for every team, a, a football team, NFL team. They're playing every Sunday. An Olympic athlete has got once every four years. So this idea of, of advancing, healing, uh, making it happen faster is even more critical, it seems, for them. Well, you know, Greg, actually it's, it's not even once every four years. Most athletes will work 20 years for one chance. And so uh, it's very difficult for athletes to repeat as Olympic athletes. You see it in swimming and track and field and in some other sports, but the majority of Olympians really make it, it's one shot in their lifetime. And it is not uncommon at all that they've trained 20 years for that one shot. And of course, in your role, you've seen some athletes who've had that injury and they couldn't go to the games, which has gotta be shattering. Well, you know, it really is. Uh, the public perception that the games occur basically once every four years is usually based around the summer games but in actuality the Olympic Games occur every two years uh, if you look at summer and then winter and uh, the privilege of leading sports medicine for Team USA provides me with the opportunity to actually come to understand the athletes as people and you know their story the trials and tribulations that they have went through in order to achieve the opportunity to represent the united states of america on the largest stage in sports in the world so so what are you learning here that's going to be helpful are you optimistic about what's happening here and and the changes that that's going to bring to sports medicine well i think that clearly uh, many of the speakers have already supported concepts that many of us know but the evidence is extremely strong about the benefits of exercise. And so one of the concepts of uh, the United States Olympic Committee is that the athletic performances of Team USA will inspire Americans to become more physically active. Clearly, physical activity, regardless of who you are or how old you are, helps to preserve your health. But in addition to that, there's the new science that relates to um, dietary type of things that people can do to take care of themselves to protect and preserve their health, as well as the future of what uh, protective, uh, regenerative uh, medical interventions will look like is something that we need to stay on top of. It's, it's so important because the recovery from an injury or illness, if it takes a, it has to be minimized because if the individual is taken out of practice or play for mm -hmm. any significant period of time, their opponents are still gaining and they're not. So. The USOC, the US Olympic Committee, has had a long involvement now with the Stedman Clinic and the Stedman Philippon Research Institute. You want to talk about that and, and what this relationship does to advance sport for the Olympians? Well, yeah, I, I, it's actually a privilege to be able to speak to that. Many years ago, an iconic orthopedic surgeon, and I consider a personal friend of mine, Dr. Stedman, became very involved in sport and developing new techniques and cutting edge technology in order to enhance and provide for the care of U.S. athletes and indeed athletes from around the world. And since that time, with his iconic presence, the Stedman Clinic and the Stedman Philippon Research Institute have continued to grow grow and uh, other people have now moved in and are trying to 
continue the legacy that Dr. Stedman started. Dr. Mark Philippon is also a personal friend of mine. I don't even want to start naming the names for fear I might forget somebody because virtually everybody here is a star. And they have been strong supporters for Team USA and absolutely a place that I have a tremendous amount of confidence in. And I really bring in people from all over the United States that represent the finest athletes that the United States has to offer right here to Vail, Colorado to receive the services because that's really my job. My job is to make sure that that athlete is placed before the finest physicians I can find to provide them with the best opportunity to recover their health and return to the field of play. And those physicians are here and they're learning and, uh, and, and they're exchanging ideas with the scientists. It, it seems like it's a very positive time in sports medicine. Well, you know, I'm really optimistic about that. For the first time in my life, and I've been in sports medicine for over 30 years, and I won't say exactly how many, but nevertheless, you know, for me, I'm seeing a cultural change in regards to sports participation. Parents are concerned about the risk of injury, and they're thinking maybe sports participation isn't such a great thing. But on the other hand, if you look at uh, some people mentioning that by 20, uh, 2040, 50% of the U.S. population will be pre-diabetic or diabetic, and one of the best ways to fight that off is through physical fitness and physical activity, it's extremely important that if you're not part of organized sports, you must be physically activity. You must, you must have a way to be physically active. And that's one of the things I really like about coming up here because the physicians themselves, as well as their staff, the environment of Vail is certainly all about being outdoors and doing things. It's not about sitting around. And we need to continue to provide the opportunities and inspirations for Americans of all ages and indeed people all around the world to keep moving in order to preserve their health. We're just over five months from the uh, lighting of the torch in uh, South Korea for the Winter Games. Uh, how's the U.S. team looking? Well, Greg, I think that we're going to field some of the finest athletes in the world. Uh, I firmly believe that. I see how hard Team USA is preparing to represent the United States of America on the field of competition. And I can tell you one thing. When it comes time to get it on and get those games started, that Team USA is going to be there and they're going to bring the best that they have to the field of competition. Thank you very much, Dr. Bill Moreau of the USOC. We'll be back a little later with more reporting from the uh, Vail Scientific Summit. It's going to be an exciting afternoon. Join us then.